Welcome back to another exciting video. Me and my partner is going for a little walk in the mountains. Check it out. I got another toy. We're going to go and set this game camera up. This is where I'm setting it. Look how beautiful that moon is back there. About two months ago, I put out a video that for me went viral. 280,000 views. In that video, I mentioned that they were installing a lot of solar farms around my home. And previously it was farmland. So apparently the farmers are selling their land to solar farms. We're leasing them, whatever's happening, but there's solar farms just popping up all over the place. Well, they plowed the fields down flat and they're turning them into solar farms. You can see right here's where they used to have the water. Now this, this video took place in Arizona. Obviously, you can see I'm not in Arizona. <laughs> Unless that you want to buy some oceanfront property in Arizona. <laughs> With 280,000 views, I got quite a few comments. And a lot of them was pertaining to that little part of the video where I mentioned the farmland had been bought up and they're turning them into solar farms. And I stated, what do you think about that? Just a simple question. And I got an array of different comments, a lot of different comments. But there was one in particular out of the hundreds and hundreds of comments that I read that actually made me think. And the comment was that these solar farms will not prevent global warming, but it will contribute to it. Because, I mean, think about it. As the commenter stated you're putting a bunch of solar panels these heat sinks basically on the surface of the earth and it's just going to create a warming effect you know residual heat coming off all these solar panels and it's kind of like putting a blanket around the earth you know a solar blanket so just like any great researcher I had to ask my robot friend this is what he said. Energy payback time on solar panels generally repay the energy used in their production within about three years under optimal conditions. However, when considering energy and environmental costs of both creation and disposal of these solar panels, a panel might indeed need about five years of operation to fully offset its life cycle impact. So what we're talking about is the impact on the environment to actually create the solar panels and then properly dispose of them. The greenhouse gases that are released into the atmosphere to create these solar panels and then properly dispose of it. In solar farms, panels are often retired about after 10 to 15 years because efficiency declines, leaving around five to 10 years of net positive environmental benefits. So you might get about five years of use according to these statistics and then you have other environmental impacts that we have to look at. We have dust storms also in Arizona now. In these areas, I'm seeing enormous dust storms. I drove through one the other day. It was just incredible. There used to be farmlands, beautiful farms, and all the soil's just been ripped off. The environment's pillaged. Just rip all this soil out, plow it all down to this dust and dirt and there's no soil. But large scale clearing associated with solar farms exaggerate these storms, creating severe environmental and public health hazards. Dust affects air quality, reducing visibility and carry particles that harms respiratory 
health. The albedo changes from bare soil. When natural vegetation is replaced with bare soil, the albedo or reflectivity of the surface changes, potentially leading to greater heat absorption and a localized warming effect. You know, kind of picture the Sahara Desert where there's no plants, no vegetation. It's hotter there because it cannot reflect that heat. It absorbs the heat. And so when you're rip, ripping the topsoil off in these farmlands and all there is is just dust and dirt left, it's going to create a heating effect, just that alone. And then coupled with the solar panels on top of all this surface of the earth, that is a heat island effect. Kind of like in your cities where you have all the pavement and so forth in these enormous cities inside of like Phoenix and Tucson, that area is hot. It's very hot. And even after the sun goes down, it absorbs that heat and it starts releasing. And that's why in, in Phoenix and Tucson, it could be midnight and still 100 degrees out here. It's freaking hell. And we're just exaggerating this effect now with the solar farms, not to mention the quality of our air. You know, we've got all this dust particles in the air. And yet there's another caveat to this. So large solar farms in deserts can create measurable changes in wind patterns and atmospheric moisture and precipitations. Dust storms can also have a broader climate effect. Dust in the atmosphere can affect cloud formation and precipitation patterns, potentially altering regional climate, exacerbating water scarcity. So, now here's another effect, and we're already seeing some of these effects. Um, and so in an arid area where we already have a problem with rainfall, it's saying that it could exaggerate it. With these dust storms is we get all this dust on these solar panels. It affects efficiency of, of it absorbing the electricity. So they, they get dust all over them. They got to wash them. And now we're using our water up. So when we created all these ideas of these giant wind farms that were put all over pretty much California and many places in the United States, I have a question. Did we anticipate all these dead birds? Did we anticipate the impact to the environment where we have whales washing up on the coast and dying because evidently there's some kind of ambient sound or something affecting their ability for migration. You know, there's a lot to take in to consider before we just start pillaging our farmland and turning them into solar farms. Maybe we should do something a little different. Like, for example, what the Native Americans are doing in some of these areas where they have diverted Colorado water or CAP water coming through, they're putting solar farms over these canals. They, I think they've got a great idea. There's got to be a better way. I am all for solar. You know that I've got solar panels outside of my house. That's my solar set up for this off-grid home. So you can see that I'm not, I'm not against solar at all. I think it has its place. Um, I just, I'm not a real big fan of these solar companies that set up the solar on your house and you must be connected to the grid in order for it to function. So let's say you have an outage, something happens, an emergency occurs, and you've got all this solar on top of your house, you can't even use it. You must have the grid. So if the grid goes down, you have solar that you cannot use. So there's actually some very, very old bleach bones here. I never noticed that. It's a skull. What kind of skull is that? That's probably that ringtail cat. You know, not not this ringtail cat, but that the lineage of it.
water is life in the desert. I want to thank the person that posted the comment in my video about these solar panels. Thank you so much for posting your comment. Please give me a like and subscribe to my channel. If you found any of this interesting, post a comment. Tell me what do you think? Are these solar farms good for the environment? Thanks for watching my video. We'll see you on the next one.